It's Monday, March 18th. This is PSN News. Tonight, we'll bring you more details on the altercation that occurred outside of Penn Towers, as well as more details following the mosque shooting in New Zealand. We also have more on Penn State Thon's new 2020 Executive Director, Rede Regina Dusler, as well as information on the College of Missage scandal. Stay tuned. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Brandon DeWolf. And I'm Elena Brown. A State College resident is being charged with aggravated assault following an altercation with a police officer outside Penn Tower Apartments on Beaver Avenue early last Friday morning. Police approached David Michael, 45, after witnessing him yelling up at several individuals on an apartment balcony. Michael allegedly reached for an officer's taser and attempted to disarm him, then proceeded to shove the officer before ripping his badge off. Additional officers soon arrived and apprehended the suspect. He is now in custody as he awaits a preliminary hearing set for March 20th after failing to post a $50,000 bail. Last Thursday, Penn State alumnus Brent Rice announced that he will be running for a seat on the State College Borough Council. Rice graduated in 2018 with degrees in political science, corporate innovation, and entrepreneurship. He was also the Speaker of the House for the university's undergraduate association. His campaign runs on six main ideas that he feels will better the community, including affordable living and embracing our history. There are four seats opening in the upcoming election, slated for May 20th, 21st. Thon has announced its, ex its executive director for 2020. Regina Dusler, a senior accounting and finance major, was announced as, ex as executive director for the Thon 2020 year on March 15th. Dusler has held positions in Thon every year since she was a freshman and served as finance director for Thon 2019. Dusler's new role sees her overseeing all 16 of Thon's committee directors and departments. Dusler is replacing Thon 2019 executive director Kelly McCready. Thon 2019 raised over $10 million in support of pediatric cancer research and patient care. Deucer's work begins now as preparations for next year's THON come into view. Another Penn State student is jumping into the political race by running for Seney County Commissioner. Junior Tanner Day is running for the Republican Party's nominee to become the next Center County Commissioner. Day, whose hometown is right outside of State College, said that the community and his experience growing up influenced his political views. Although he is only 21, Day believes he is well equipped to serve the community, wanting to create a positive change and have an impact on Center County. Stay tuned, because after the break, Kylie Dahowski will bring you the latest in entertainment news. Welcome back to PSN News. I'm Kylie Dahowski with your entertainment update. My Hero Zero will upgrade from their usual gig at Champs this weekend to the State Theater. The local popular cover band is holding their first ever ticketed concert at the Theater on College Avenue at 8 p.m. on Saturday, March 23rd. The band will not only perform many of their most well-known covers, but will also debut songs from their first original album. Tickets are $23.50 for adults and $12.50 for those under the age of 18. Besides performing at Champs on the weekends, My Hero Zero attained its current popularity from regularly performing at THON over the years. After the concert, the band will host a meet and greet with fans. Sarah Koenig, the co-creator and host of the wildly popular true crime podcast Serial, will be speaking at Penn State next weekend. Koenig lives in State College with her husband, Ben Schreier, who is a professor of English and Jewish Studies here at Penn State. The host of the podcast is returning to speak at the school to talk about Season 3 of Serial, as well as the criminal justice system in our country. Unlike Seasons 1 and 2, Season 3 touches on the entire criminal justice system rather than just singular cases. Koenig goes behind the scenes of the Cleveland Courthouse and covers everything happening there for every type of criminal case, from misdemeanors to felonies. Koenig will speak about Season 3 of Serial in 100 Thomas at 5 p.m. on Friday, March 29th. A burn survivor decided to show her scars in a recent photo shoot in an attempt to empower others and convey a different kind of beauty. 31-year-old Lee Jiang from Taiwan suffered burns to over 90% of her body after she survived an explosion at a water park four years ago that injured hundreds and killed 15. She has undergone 21 surgeries in the past three years and recently decided to showcase her scars as part of a series photographer Devin Tai is doing on survivors. 
She thought it would empower others to see that someone can feel confident and beautiful even though her skin is covered in scars. That's your entertainment update. Stay tuned because after the break, Noah Chast has the latest in sports. Welcome back to PSN News. I'm Noah Chast with your sports update. The Penn State's men ho men's hockey team beat top-ranked Ohio State 4-1 to advance to the Big Ten championship game. Sophomore Alex Limoges scored the eventual game winner while setting a Penn State single-season goal record with his 23rd of the season. The team started off strong, scoring two goals in the first period to snag a 2-0 lead. The Lions kept on moving, leading 4-1 by the end of the third and scoring a fifth goal on a Buckeye empty net in the final minutes. The up upset sends Penn State to its second Big Ten championship in the past three seasons. The team heads to South Bend to face number two Notre Dame Irish on Saturday, March 23rd for the Bing Ten title game. The Penn State's men's baseball team completed a sweep of UMass Lowell with the walk-off win for the second straight day this weekend. Freshman Ryan Ford hit a single up the middle in the bottom of the tenth to give the Lions the 3-2 victory. Ford drove in two of Penn State's three runs on the day and one of their only four hits. Penn State got on base often with ten walks during the game and had solid outings by pitchers Connor Larkin, Tyler Shingledecker, and Mason Mellett, who earned the win in relief. It was Penn State's fourth walk-off win of the season, improving the record to an impressive 13-3 on the year. Penn State will begin, play, will begin Big Ten play this Friday at home against Minnesota. The Philadelphia Flyers defeated the Pittsburgh Penguins 3-2 in an overtime win Sunday night. Sean Gattarier scored the game-winning goal in an overtime with 3.4 seconds left on the clock. It was a defensive heavy game with the score locked 0-0 heading into the second period. Flyers rookie goalie Carter Hart had an impressive night in the net with 41 saves, seven of which coming in overtime. The Penguins still sit third in the Metropolitan Division with the Flyers in the sixth spot and 19 points out of a wild card spot. That was your sports update. We'll have this week's weather report after the break. Stay tuned. From the students of Penn State Meteorology, here is your Penn State Campus Weather Service forecast. Good afternoon, Central Pennsylvania. I'm meteorologist Jacob Morris here with your PSN News weather update. I hope you enjoyed your St. Patrick's Day weekend. It was a dry weekend with temperatures a little bit colder than average for this time of year. And those dry conditions will be sticking around for the majority of this week. And temperatures will be on the rise throughout this week. Temperatures might reach the 50 degree mark by the time we get to the end of the week. And then I looked at the extended forecast period throughout the end of March. And it looks like we'll be staying warm. Temperatures should stay above average throughout the rest of the month of March. If we look at our future weather time this hour by hour for you, we stay mostly clear throughout the evening and overnight hours tonight. You'll be waking up tomorrow to mostly sunny conditions. A nice day here for the day tomorrow on Tuesday in central Pennsylvania. Wednesday looks like another nice day here across the state, mostly sunny skies. It's not until we get to the day on Thursday where we can expect to see some precipitation move into our area. This is at 2 a.m. on Thursday. A few of those rain showers making their way across the state. A few lingering showers possible throughout the day on Thursday. Mostly cloudy skies overall for the day on Thursday. Not a complete washout uh, by any means. And then those that, uh, that system will move out of our area throughout the rest of the day on Thursday and setting up for a nice weekend ahead. We like to look at these 500 millibar heights that uh, indicate what the general pattern is like across the United States. You can see today that we had a uh, trough across the eastern United States. That's what gave us these below average temperatures and that will stick around for the day tomorrow. But then that trough moves out to the east and we get some of these warmer colors. These yellows and oranges are indicative of some warmer temperatures here at the surface. So by the time we get to the weekend, we can expect to see that trough moving eastward and some of that warmer air coming up into the mid-Atlantic states and here into Pennsylvania. Your forecast for the night tonight, dropping down to a low of 24 degrees, which is a little bit below average for this time of year. Mostly clear skies for the overnight hours tonight. Tomorrow we warm up to a high of 44, mostly sunny skies and a only a westerly wind coming in at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Your seven-day forecast for the Campus Weather Service, another cooler than average day for the day tomorrow with those mostly sunny conditions. Dry again for the day on Wednesday, but we warm up to around the 50 degree mark. Again, 50 for the day on Thursday with a few of those showers possible with that system moving through. And then 50 degrees again for uh, around the 50 degree mark, I should say, for both Friday and Saturday. A beautiful start to the weekend with abundant sunshine and then temperatures still in the mid-50s as we head into the second half of the weekend. 
For PSN News, I'm meteorologist Jacob Morris. Have a great rest of your week. Fifty people were killed and fifty more were injured following the mass shootings at two Christchurch, New Zealand mosques on Friday. The suspected perpetrators, 28-year-old Brenton Harrison Terrence of Australia, who is allegedly associated with the alt-right and white supremacist movements. Authorities quickly apprehended Tarrant and are now rushing to release the victims' bodies to their families so the traditional Muslim burial practices may be observed. The incident is the worst mass shooting in modern New Zealand history. Lawmakers are calling the nation's gun laws into question following the deadly attack as the world mourns. A recent scandal surrounding many celebrities by bribing college and missing departments for the acceptance of their children is far from over. Many of the parents involved with the case are facing federal charges along with civil lawsuits. Lori Laughlin and her daughter, who have been both accused with bribery, have lost jobs and sponsorships. Congress, Congress is also looking into changing legislation around the individuals who receive tax write-offs coming from donating large sums of money to universities. Democratic Senator Ron Wyden from Oregon said, quote, the federal government shouldn't be perpetrating this system by awarding tax breaks to these contributions, contributions that return to the donor a benefit of incestimal value, end quote. Several universities have also launched their own internal investigations. President Donald Trump issued the first veto of his presidency on Friday as part of a continued effort to fund his proposed border wall with federal national emergency funds. The bill saw both Democrats and Republicans vote to overturn Trump's declaration of a national emergency along our border with Mexico. Trump's declaration of a national emergency is expected to remain in effect, however, as the vetoed bill is sent back to Congress, it could face a potential but unlikely override. Declaring a national emergency to access funds not allocated by Congress is one of the few means left for the president to fund the wall promised as a part of his 2016 presidential campaign. In October of last year, a Boeing 737 MAX jet flying with Indonesian Airlines crashed, resulting in the death of all 189 people aboard. Earlier this month, a similar crash happened involving the same model plane, killing all 157 people on the Ethiopian airline flight. In the aftermath of these events, many countries including China, Canada, and Australia have banned all Boeing 37, 737 MAX jets. However, while the United States grounded all flights involving these jets last Wednesday, it is unclear what their decision will, on the matter will be. Southwest, a major U.S. airline, tweeted, quote, As Southwest operates a fleet of 34 Boeing 737 MAX aircraft, we remain confident in the safety and airworthiness and of our fleet and more than 750 Boeing aircraft. Our focus on the safety of our operation remains constant and unwavering." End quote. And that's all for tonight on PSN News. Be sure to check us out on Twitter at PSN News. Thank you for joining us.